My name is Chris. This is Wheelhouse Trading and welcome to the Wheelhouse. So I want to go over quite a few things today. There's a lot to talk about, a lot going on in global markets. Uh, before I do that, please subscribe if you haven't. Select all so you get notifications and like the video. And if you got time, shoot me a comment on what you like a video on. I would appreciate that. Um, hopefully everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I know today uh, in the markets was not very fun. Um, the Dow actually dropped uh, the largest amount that it has all year. Um, and we had one time, I remember, uh, that it was pretty close to this earlier this year. So pretty bad out there. Um, obviously, you know, this new variant for COVID um, uh, is, is a, uh, a big concern. There's a lot of uncertainty. We don't know everything about it. We do know some, some little things. Uh, the WHO has actually named it Omicron. Um, so we're going to be following the story, uh, but before I get too into COVID, um, I just wanted to let you guys know for all of you that have been interested in taking the courses, I'm doing a Black Friday sale, the coupon code. Once you go to the Discord and you verify, you go to Frequently Asked Questions and you can upgrade from there. And when you upgrade, there's a coupon code that is W H T. BF. No, yeah, Wheelhouse Trading Black Friday. So you'll put that in and you'll get an additional 20% off of the already additional, I think, 20% off if you do the annual membership. So um, instead of, you know, paying 99 a month, which is close to 1200, um, I believe that you are paying, I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's almost like half the price. So um, you know, you can get in there, use that code. I'm going to keep that open until Monday. So you'll have three days to do it. And again, the code is W H T B F. Okay. Um, so where do we start? Um, I guess what we should start on is the indexes. So let's go take a look and see what's going on. Remember, I've been telling you when there's a problem with the economy and and whatnot, um, you're going to see it in the Dow. And so here we go. Um, you know, big sell off. Usually the, usually it's pretty mellow on a day like today after a holiday. Um, not a ton of volume, not a ton of trading um, and usually the beginning of a rally. But not today on this news. Uh, these COVID fears uh, strike the heart of people because people are worried about lockdowns. Um, we now have travel restrictions, which has been um, implemented by multiple countries, including the United States. Um, you know, there's not a ton of cases thus far, uh, but we're, we're really in the interim here. We don't know a lot and we're going to learn as we go. Um, but, uh, but yeah, immediately, I mean, a lot of things sold off and a lot of things immediately rotated to those old stay at home positions, you know, your Zooms, your Pelotons, your Netflixes, all this stuff again. Um, you know, the last time that we had these, uh, the Delta and the original um, COVID, uh, there was V-shaped recoveries, there were big bounce backs, there were overreactions, but you have to, you have to be careful. I mean, you can't, you can't say hey, it's an overreaction because you don't know. I mean, I don't personally know. I don't know if this is going to, you know, become a, uh, a snowball that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. And just because the last two times are, you know, it recovered nicely, um, you know, we just don't know how fast a recovery will be. We don't know if, um, you know, there's going to be lockdowns. We don't know if there's cases in the United States. We just don't know a lot. And so the markets are going to react and pull their money to the side. And if you guys have been watching the channel, I already started pulling money to the side. Um, earlier this week, I believe it was Monday and last week, um, which helped me mitigate a lot of damage uh, today, even though it's definitely down. Um, and then, of course, crypto, crypto is a big sell off as well. So we'll, we'll talk about the crypto sell off. We'll talk about the market sell off. But let's start with the indexes. So on the daily, this thing went red on the Dow already. And then the momentum shifted because we had a couple green days in a row. And then, boom, a big drop today, which is keeping it uh, low. And of course, now we're below the 50 on the Dow, which is uh, not good. Okay, so it's something to watch. Not a bad idea to take a look at your 
you're if you're in the profit on things move it to the side that's not a bad idea and if you're negative on things it's not a bad idea to consider just taking taking a loss uh, depending on how big the loss is I mean if it's so big I mean you should have already been out of it but if it's so big I mean you might as well just ride it right but if you're just a little bit you know one two three percent you know anything under eight percent you can consider just moving that money to the side um, hopefully it bounces right away Monday there's probably gonna be a lot of news over the weekend um, I just don't know nobody really knows we'll just have to you know minute to minute hour to hour kind of see what happens and develops um, you know I don't like that the Dow is under the 50 that is a uh, pretty pretty low um, your spy also you know down on the day quite a bit Nasdaq got hit really hard um, but remember tech actually went up a lot uh, during the pandemic uh, when there were the lockdowns and, and, and all that and it has a lot to do with the stimulus there's a lot of a lot of moving parts here that we're gonna have to keep an eye on um, but yeah I mean look this thing tested the looks like it came down to the 45 EMA so and it's right on the daily and it broke its trend line so this is not good um, the Russell the Russell just can't really get a break and the Russell's a lot of your small caps and mid caps and I'm sure it's in a lot of portfolios because there's a lot of a lot of fun companies uh, to invest in in the Russell and so that's where uh, you know there's gonna be a lot of damage in there too and then the Russell just can't really you know kind of get ahead this year anyways it's been it's been consolidating in this channel all year it did have a breakout and then it just came came right back down in it so um, you got to watch the VIX the VIX was at um, I mean look at the spike today it actually spiked as high as it did on September 20th and this was probably May 12th let's see May 13th so this spike right here was absolute fear and it was also a really good time um, to re-enter because the you know the everything came down so much that the people that bought in May 12th May 13th like I did um, and, and rode stuff up made a lot of gains so you know watch the volatility now it is not 100% guaranteed that you know buying here is going to be um, you know the best dip I mean this this you know depending on the news cycle this weekend there could be you know more information more news on this variant and um, you know this this VIX could go up even higher the higher the VIX goes the further the market falls and um, that's why it's good to not be over leveraged to move money to the side take your profits mitigate your losses and kind of just wait for the dust to settle see what's going to happen and then use it as an opportunity if it arises okay so um, yeah the VIX was up 47 percent today at its at its peak that's that's a lot um, we're gonna definitely have to watch the indexes guys the macros you know if all of them start to uh, fall I mean again my best advice and suggestion would be just just get your profits take your profits you can always rebuy if you're at a small loss it's not a bad idea you don't want to get caught in a situation where you're where you're trying to average down and fight the tide when all the macros are, are coming down that's that's a dangerous game and a slippery slope and it can cost you a lot over time so the best thing that I found in times like this is take my profits move it to the side I already did that and then tighten your stops uh, mitigate your losses move it to the side wait for the dust to settle there will be a day where it gets extremely bullish and bounces and you can re-enter you can capture those gains but you know you don't want to sit through you know two three four days or two three four weeks of of red we just don't know we're gonna have to find out how contagious it is do the vaccines um, work against it um, has it what kind of exposure uh, is across all the countries we just don't know we don't have a lot of information quite yet um, but let me play a clip from dr. Fauci for you so we can hear what he has to say what can you tell us about this well certainly there is a new variant uh, that is now in South Africa in the, in the Gauteng province that has some mutations that are raising some concern particularly with regard to possibly transmissibility increase and possibly evasion of immune response we don't know that for sure right now this is really something that's in in motion and 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 we just uh, arranged right now a discussion between our scientists and the south african scientists a little bit later in the morning 
to really get the facts because you're hearing a lot of things back and forth. We want to find out scientists to scientists exactly what is going on. But it's something that has emerged in South Africa and seems to be spreading in a, in a reasonably rapid rate in the sense of when they do test positivity, they're seeing that it's a bit more widespread in South Africa than was originally felt a couple of days ago. So it's in a fluid motion. We're finding more about it. And literally, it's something that in real time we're learning more and more about. Is it possible it's already in the U.S.? You know, of course, anything is possible. We don't know that there's no indication that it is right now. It seemed to have been restricted. There were some cases that originated in South Africa and that went to Botswana and people who traveled and found out they were infected and one that had gone actually to Hong Kong. So there's a lot of travel. You never know exactly where it are. And that's the reason why we're getting together to them to try and get the precise molecular makeup of it so you could actually test for it. And that's something that'll take a little bit to put the appropriate materials together to do that. But we are in very active communication with our South African colleague scientists. So explain to us the questions and the concerns about how this might evade immunity, because there are so many mutations here on the spike protein, which is what a, a vaccine, the vaccines that we have are designed to hit. The question is now going to be right is that spike protein still permeable when it comes to the vaccine? Yeah, that's what we're going to be finding out, because when you look at a mutation, it can give you a hint or a prediction that it might evade the immune response. What you need to do is you need to get that particular sequence of the virus, put it in a form in the lab where you can actually test the different antibodies. So you can have a prediction that it might evade or you can actually prove it. Right now, we're getting the material together with our South African colleagues to get a situation where you could actually directly test it. So right now, you're talking about sort of like a red flag that this might be an issue, but we don't know. Once you test it, you'll know for sure whether or not it does or does not evade the antibodies that we make, for example, against the virus through a vaccine or following convalescent after you get infected, when you get antibodies, do those antibodies protect you against this new virus? The answer is we don't know right now, but we're going to find out for okay, sure. Okay, so they don't have all the answers. Um, they are getting the variant. Um, they're going to take it to a lab. They're going to test it against antibodies um, as well as see how effective the vaccines are against it. Um, we're going to learn more. We're going to follow the story. Um, but uh, it looks like it um, originated in South Africa. Um, there is travel restrictions. Um, I pulled this up right here. Uh, the WHO says the new variant in South Africa is of concern. Several countries, including the United States, announced restrictions on travelers from South Africa in an effort to contain the new Omicron variant, which has mutations that may make reinfection more likely. Um, so there is seven countries, including the United States, uh, that has uh, put travel restrictions on. And uh, so far, only a few dozen cases of the new variant have been identified in South Africa, Botswana, Belgium, Hong Kong, and Israel. There is no proof yet that the variant is more contagious or lethal or could diminish the protective power of the vaccines. But uncertainty on those questions was one factor in the speed of countries moving towards restrictions. Um, yeah, so, you know, in the past, uh, you know, it took, took all this, you know, political debate to do travel restrictions. But I think, uh, I think everybody's kind of learned now, you know, if there's a new variant, you just kind of, kind of stop it, you know, don't, don't let it in the country, cut travel, you know, find out where it originated from, get a hold of it, test it, see if our vac vaccines are effective. Um, try to understand, you know, how fast it mutates uh, or, or uh, you know, what the contagion level is. And, and you know, so we're just going to have to keep an eye on this, um, see what happens and uh, see how aggressive um, this variant is. So um, there are other countries here that have also halted and restricted flights from South Africa, including Bahrain, 
Belgium, Britain, Croatia, France, Germany, Israel, Italy, Japan, Malta, and Netherlands, Hong Kong, the Philippines, and Singapore. So this is breaking news. I mean, this is a uh, this is happening as we speak. Now, cryptocurrency, we had a great Thanksgiving. I mean, we were rallying. At Wheelhouse Trading, I, I called out a, a crypto, a few of them, but I called one out. It was at a dollar three, and I started talking about it, and it, it was red at the time, but it was building momentum, and it was a uh, BAT. And then it got to like 107, and I, I pulled the trigger at 111. I made an alert about it, and the thing went all the way to a dollar 87. It was a massive gain. In fact, somebody DM me and made over 50 grand on that trade, um, thanking me. So a lot, of, a lot of people made a lot of money on that trade as well as we took some other crypto trades and we did good, um, all to wake up to find out that we had a bunch of our stops hit in the profit. Um, although my Ethereum, I moved my stop up on Ethereum and I got stopped at even, so that kind of sucked. But uh, yeah, crypto is really, really down uh, right now. Again, big overreaction. There was a big sell of Bitcoin on one of the exchanges as well. Um, the crypto market cap is something I'm keeping an eye on. It's come down quite a bit. Um, I've been looking at all the charts, trying to trying to keep an eye on things. But I pulled up this article here from uh, Reuters. Uh, Cryptocurrencies tumble as coronavirus variant shakes markets. Um, this is not just the stock market or the U.S. market. This is global markets in crypto and uh stocks so it says right here bitcoin tumbled over nine percent on friday dragging smaller tokens down after the discovery of a new potentially vaccine resistant coronavirus variant saw investors dump riskier assets for the perceived safety of bonds the yen and the dollar okay well remember when the dollar goes up bitcoin goes down when the dollar goes down bitcoin goes up so if people are having a flight to safety some of these things that means they're moving to cash even though cash uh, is depreciating, it's depreciating less than your portfolio at this point with these kind of fears, basically, is what they're saying. Um, it was quite a drop. Ethereum dropped even more. I had it pulled up. Um, I know it's over 10%, so it's kind of rough, especially after the huge day that we were just, the, you know, everything was developing in the charts. Everything was starting to look really good, and then, boom, attack again, you know. Um, you know, I don't think it's over for Bitcoin or crypto by any means. It's just, you know, we, we just got to see what happens with this coronavirus variant. And, you know, it just it really sucks because the charts were developing in crypto, especially on the big caps like the, you know, they were coming back on like your Solanas and your um, Bitcoins and Ethereums and everything was starting to really start to develop in the charts. And I was getting really excited to make a positive video about crypto and the chart developments. But you know, when there's a big news piece, like something like this, like a war or a pandemic or a COVID variant, when there's a huge news piece like that, it doesn't matter what the charts are saying, because the news can destroy the chart, you know, no matter how bullish your indicators are, and how bullish the trends and everything is, I mean, it can it can take it away, you know, pretty quickly. Um, now, in a more stable market, a normal type market, then you know, those you know, if you're bullish on the daily charts and you buy in, technically it usually will rally for quite a while. But this is, like I said, a revolver market. I mean, it's it's changing like minute to minute, hour to hour. So, you know, when that happens, you're at a very pro level. And the best thing, in my opinion, is just to kind of move it all to cash. And then when there's momentum, just day trade it, hot and heavy. And then boom, in, move those stops up, 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 up. When it comes down, go to cash and just wait for it to come down or re-enter and you just day trade through it, you know? And then when it stabilizes, then we start looking at, you know, our DCA or our swing trades and stuff like that. But, you know, it's not it's not time to buy when you have a news piece like this going on. So, um, you know, uh, crypto, you know, sure will come back. It really depends on Bitcoin, you know? Like the big ones have to, they have to stabilize. There has to be, uh, you know, we don't want to keep dropping. You know, we don't really want to drop below that 52,930 level, that next big support. Uh, if there's not a big bounce there, then it starts getting a little sketchy. So, you know, we got to keep an eye on that stuff. Let's just pull up a chart, actually, so we can kind of, you know, take a look a little, little closer what's going on here. There it is. Okay, it's come up a little bit. All right, it's coming up a tiny bit. 
I mean, your cloud is red on Bitcoin. You know, look at this wick down. I mean, this wick came out of its its channel, came down through a support at 55,642, wicked almost down to the 52,900 area, you know, and then it, it, it the bulls pushed it all the way back up through this resistance and up into the channel. So that is really good. Um, that's really good. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean... <laughs> I, I, I'm sure everything's going to bounce back. I mean, we're, we're definitely flirting with some danger, though. I'm not going to lie. We're at the bottom of a channel. We're, we're breaking through things. We pushed up, luckily. But, I mean, we're not, you know, if we, if we were to fall through here and then get to here, okay, that's we could deal with that. But if we fall through there, then, then there's going to be cause for concern because we're basically, cre now we're creating, you know, lower highs and we have a trend change you know we have a directional change and we do not want you know to start making some form of, of a uh you know directional change here we don't we don't want to be going down we don't want to be going from up to sideways to down like that's that's what we don't want so we we really need this to come up and and you know realistically we need it to at least break the sixty seven thousand one hundred and one dollars you know, not right away, but it, it needs to kind of bounce and do its thing and get above there and create a higher high so that the direction stays in this channel. So that's something that we really need to watch and we need to watch closely. Um, and if, you know, the bigger caps start to fall, well, the alts are going to get um, tore back, you know. So we got to be real careful. We don't want to overbuy. Um, even though the prices are good, we don't want to overbuy this dip too much. Um quite yet until we kind of see what's going to happen. So um, we are still in an uptrend. We are above the 200, but where this goes, you know, we're not, we're not totally sure. I do, I do. I mean, I guess I'm hopeful that everything is going to be okay, but a lot has changed since I made a Bitcoin video. I mean, we had, we had a lot of bullishness in the charts. Everything looked really good. There's tons of good things going on with Bitcoin. I mean, I can't imagine it. It's not it's not going anywhere, but it could go down. It could go up. You know, it's just kind of a little bit of indecision because we've had so many different changes in the last week or so. I mean, we've had a huge sell off to a sick rally to another huge sell off. I mean, it's basically like a, a you know, a sandwich, right? A poop sandwich. <laughs> so it's kind of like all over the place, just like all the markets. So. All right, so what else? Um, yeah, we had uh, the crypto rally, crypto sell-off, stock sell-off, we know why. Stay-at-home stocks are doing good. Financials got wrecked. Why did financials get wrecked, okay? Financials were supposed to be the big thing because of tapering and interest rates. Well, financials are gonna get wrecked if there's fears of a lockdown and then more stimulus and you know, them keeping rates at zero. So the uncertainty with the variant of like not knowing, hey, am I gonna stay at home? Well, people are, they don't know if rates are gonna go up and banks benefit from rates, so they're gonna pull their money from financials. Crude dropped 11, 12% today, oil and energy, which was the top sector. That got hit, financials got hit, and then what comes back? You got some some like vaccine stocks come back, your your regular rotation and stay at homes like your Zooms, your Netflix, your Pelotons. But what's gonna get hit? Travel stocks, airline stocks, stocks like Airbnb, um, I'm sure restaurants, you know. I mean, with any time that you're thinking about a lockdown and uncertainty with a COVID variant, it's gonna go back to stay at home and it's just gonna be the exact same playbook it was last year. And I know that playbook and you guys can uh, get in the Discord link and, and uh, have the link in the description. So just click that, verify. If you wanna upgrade, that's cool. You should do it this weekend because I'm doing the 50% off on the annual membership for Jedi Gold, which gives you the one-on-ones with me, gives you the, um, the Wheelhouse Wednesdays. You get to chat in all the different uh, groups in there, the crypto stock and then the Jedi area. And then you get all the courses, of course. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, just keeping an eye on all the crypto markets, keep an eye on the stock markets. I mean, there's gonna be some plays, you know, whether it's back to some healthcare stuff or back to some, uh, 
you know, um, you know, maybe 3M with masks comes back for all I know. Um, but, you know, stay at home went well today, but, you know, you also don't want to get tricked and trapped. I mean, there could be news that comes out and they could say, well, this isn't really uh, that contagious and we have it contained down to, you know, less than 50 cases and blah, 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 blah. And our vaccines work and it could be good like that. And then everything just kind of comes back. Or it could be the opposite where they're like, this is bad. This, uh, this, you know, attacks your lungs. Like, I'm just making this up as I go. And I don't know anything about it, but they, it could be very contagious. It could be multiple countries, you know, it could be bad, 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 bad as an example. And then the market is going to react very negatively, negative to negatively to that. So um, we just got to follow it, guys. We just got to follow it. This is a tricky market. It is not an easy market. Again, when you don't know really what the future holds in markets, it's always best to kind of mitigate your risk and pull it to the side. And that's why these two rules that I'm going to give you right now save you a ton of money and protect your accounts. And one is just position sizing, maximum 10%. Per position so whatever your portfolio amount is 10% per position that's your maximum and your maximum loss is 8% per and it really shouldn't even be 8% it should be less than that but that would be your maximum so if you had all that going on the worst worst case you could ever lose is 8% so if you had 10 grand you lose 800 bucks as an example so and then you're just moved on the side and cash and you're just waiting and then you can come back in when it's safe and you can make your money back but uh yeah, position sizing, having a rule for that and uh, a maximum loss uh, rule for that will help you in times like this, okay? Uh, it's rotating, it's moving, it's moving hot and fast and it's hard to keep up with. So <clears throat> I will definitely help you with that and navigate these rough seas as your captain here at Wheelhouse Trading. Just uh, make sure you subscribe, you like, you hit the bell, you click the Discord if you can. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so... I guess the last thing to talk about here is the DD situation in China. Good old China. So basically, you know, ever since this company DD has come out, uh, which is a ride hailing company in China, and it's a good company, a lot of employees, a lot of good things about this particular company. Well, it listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, a lot of people got excited, had a big pump, and then immediately China. Um, came out and really just started started messing with Didi and its stockholders immediately. Um, now they are asking uh, the Chinese regulators, that is, are asking Didi to um, come up with a plan, present it to their regulators, and delist from the New York Stock Exchange. So um, it says right here, Chinese regulators have asked Didi top executives to devise a plan to delist from U.S. Uh, forces. People familiar with the matter said an unprecedented request that like that's likely to revive fears about Beijing's intentions for its giant tech industry. Um, you know, without going through all this, like it's very tough to be invested in Chinese stocks right now. It, it is it's just very tough. I, I've got my portfolio down to just one left. Even though there's ones that I really like, I like Alibaba, I like JD.com, there's I like Xpeng, there's things I like, um, you know, Neo and whatnot, but it's just really tough. It's tough to to navigate even with what's going on in the US, let alone in a country that you don't live in. So in my portfolio, I have I've thought about that and I have just, you know, I've mitigated it down to one which is Neo. And I'm not even so sure that once I once it it goes up and it does its thing and I make you know gains on it again for like the sixth time, I might even cut it out. I don't know. I have not made that decision, but I am kind of tired personally of the extra stress coming from another country and the constant FUD attacks personally. Again, it's hard enough to navigate, um, you know, with everything going on here. So I haven't made that decision, but. I did make the decision to cut it from four to three and three to two and two to one. And now I'm with one and it is, it is less painful for me. Um, even though Neo is just all over the place up and down. So look, um, I'm going to keep you abreast of what's going on with, uh, you know, this on, on, on DD. I'm going to keep you abreast of what's going on with this COVID variant. 
I'll definitely keep you abreast of what's going on with trade alerts, sell alerts, buy alerts. You know, if you're in the Paddle One or Jedi tier in the Discord, and I'll keep you abreast of what's going on in the crypto as well as stock markets. And uh, do me a favor, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and select all, and make a comment. Let me know what you guys want me to make a video on. I'm going to be working all weekend. I'm going to be making courses uh, for the Jedis all weekend long. And uh, I might even fast track some courses about shorting and some things like that, puts and, and whatnot, you know, for, for these types of uh, market conditions. So, yeah, I appreciate you for stopping by and watching. And my name is Chris, and welcome to the wheelhouse. Thank you.